In World War I, industrial warfare caused unprecedented damage to soldiers' bodies. The challenges to medics were huge. The Royal Army Medical Corps, or RAMC, was in charge of looking after the health of the British Army's forces, treating the wounded and saving lives. As a doctor myself, it's amazing to look at what seems to my modern eyes the very crude equipment I would have had to use back in World War I. Today, I'm being allowed to examine close up the kit used by my predecessors. I'm just looking at a picture of two stretcher bearers, just young guys actually, standing there very straight and proud with their stretchers. One of them is John Hill, and this is his satchel. And I'm going to have a look inside to see what a stretcher bearer from World War I would have been carrying. Silk sterile tubes. Oh wow, these are little vials of silk kept sterile in this glass vial and it would have been used for stitching up wounds. So that goes to show that even whilst they were scooping up people they were possibly doing first aid along the way as well and under fire. I'm going to carefully put the lid back on that. Okay. There would have been 12 of them in there. I feel like I'm delving into a little treasure trove. Could this be a tourniquet? I think it is. This looks like a tourniquet that you'd use to stop bleeding. You'd, you'd tie it on the affected limb where you've got a wound, if it's bleeding out, you go above it and you, you tie this on and wrap it around tight. I'm guessing that this is a tourniquet. I may be wrong, but I can't see what else it would be used for. Something else in here. It smells so old. What's this? It's a bandage. Well, I think they're slings, actually. Yep, they haven't changed much. Still very much the same. And this, it's a bit heavy, is a lantern. Because obviously when they went to pick up their casualties at night that had fallen during the day, they wouldn't be able to see anything, so they needed a light. Imagine that, illuminating yourself as you went to pick up casualties. Just goes to show how brave John Hill and his colleagues were. I've also just found this. It's John Hill's nursing dictionary. And it's got abbreviations to all sorts of technical medical terms and equipment in here. And it's really quite interesting to note because today I'm always carrying little aid memoirs and pocket books of this, that and the other on me. And I have my own medical dictionary sitting on my desk at all times. And even then, a hundred years ago, he wasn't deploying out into the field without his little aid memoir. And it's well, well worn. I love it. This is an Aladdin's cave for me. It tells me so much about what it was like a hundred years ago. And what we've got going on here is a Royal Army Medical Corps sergeant tending to a Royal Army Medical Corps doctor. But what I like about this is that it demonstrates the reality. Just because you're a medic, just because you wear the emblem, doesn't mean that you're immune to being hit. Guess what this is? It's an x-ray from a hundred years ago. It's the x-ray of the neck and the bottom of the head of a stretcher bearer. And this round dark circle here is shrapnel. And how do I know it's shrapnel? This is the exact same shrapnel that you can see in the x-ray. And he also got extra bits of shrapnel in his head as well. What became standard was everyone who had suffered a head or a neck injury was given an x-ray.
Before World War I started, it was a brand new technique. Some people had adopted it, others hadn't. But as a consequence of World War I, and the way that it was used so extensively, propelled the use of x-rays throughout medicine. One of the RAMC's most important jobs was evacuating the wounded from the battlefield. This is a stretcher cart, and I have to say I'm pretty relieved I don't have to use this to transport my patients around, but this is precisely what the medics during World War I were using to transfer their patient around in the field hospital area. For a patient to get to the field hospital, they'd had a whole journey beforehand from the point of injury. They'd be picked up by the stretch bearers, taken to a regimental aid post, and then further back to a dressing station and then further back still to the field hospital. One of the developments during World War I was the idea that for a patient to really recover fully, you had to take them away from the chaos and the frightening sounds of a frontline area to a place where they'd have some peace and quiet, some good nursing, so that that could enhance their recovery. And what we have here is an original operating table from World War I. And it's a portable one at that. Look at this, look at this. These are the handles that were used. And it folds down so that it could have been moved around easily. What I find really profound about this as I touch this is that on this table, the wounded soldiers were being operated on by my predecessors in medicine and surgery. I find that really quite profound and very moving actually. This is where techniques were developed that have gone on to help us in the way that we practice medicine today. <laughs>